Hi, I'm Michael Jones. I'm one of the pastor teachers at the Orange Free Church of Christ in Orange County, California. Our congregation is located in Southern California, and as with most communities in the world right now, we're dealing with a coronavirus COVID-19 event. We've been requested to practice social distancing and stay away from others to help slow the spread of the virus. So today I'm broadcasting from just outside the gates at Jurassic Park as I try to do my part to remain away from others and slow the spread of the virus. I'll continue looking for other isolated places to broadcast from in the days ahead. Today I want to take a look at the process of spiritual growth and development. In 1 Peter 2, verses 2 and 3, Peter says, Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. In that passage, Peter makes reference to growth, and certainly spiritual growth is an important subject for Christians to deal with. Think of it this way. Life is characterized by growth. Once a person is born, they continue to grow physically. And once a person spiritually is born, they should also begin to grow spiritually. In fact, the image of birth related to our spiritual life in the Lord is exactly what Jesus made reference to in John chapter 3 in his chat with Nicodemus. There, Jesus said, um, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so once we are spiritually born again, at that process, we begin the process of growth and development. Um, don't you hate it when you enjoy something that's really good and then something comes along that messes it all up? Oftentimes, the manufacturer themselves will do it. One man described the experience this way. In my boyhood years, the original recipe for Kentucky Fried Chicken was awesome. The taste was great and the smell, too, especially when you opened up those little white buckets with Colonel Sanders' face on it. Then somebody got the brilliant idea to change the method of cooking the chicken and ruined it. By the way, I'm not the only one who feels this way. I went on the internet and read an article from April 2016 that they were going to go back to the cooking chicken the way Colonel Sanders did at the very beginning. They were going to stop messing up things. And it's about time to. From my own personal life, I remember when I was a high school kid in 1985, Coca-Cola changed the formula for Coke and called it New Coke. I lived in Atlanta, Georgia at the time, ground zero for Coca-Cola, and when that happened, it was a disaster for Coke. They messed up everything. They botched up it all. Cadbury uh, changed the formula for their Easter egg candy, the Cadbury egg, recently, and they replaced dairy milk with some cheaper chocolate, and a lot of people believe that destroyed the, t the taste. They've lost a ton of money, I'm sure, because they just messed it up. Well, I grew up in the South, as I mentioned earlier, and when I grew up, we had an expression, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. When you look in the Bible, you'll find a lot of people that kind of mess up things related to their spiritual life. They're moving along with God, progressing great, and then they take a detour or a wrong path, and they mess everything up. The church at Ephesus messed up God's blessings on them because they lost their first love. Demas messed up by going after the things of the world and deserting Paul and quitting his service. Solomon messed up the blessings he was receiving from the Lord when he decided to marry pagan women that God specifically had told him not to. David messed up his spiritual life when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and had Uriah killed in battle. The nation of Israel bundled their blessings that they had from God by getting out of Egypt through the Exodus and then erecting a golden calf to worship. These are all examples that remind us that you can mess up after you've started a path of blessing with the Lord. That's really what our passage is that we want to look at today from 1 John. In 1 John, John takes a look at spiritual growth and progress, looking at it as being involved in stages. Here's where he starts this passage off, starting in verse 12. John says, I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. We are, as Christians, children of God, because our sins have been forgiven. For your Greek students out there, you'll note that the word for children is the Greek word technion, which just means offspring. We are children of God, again, because of Christ and what he has done for us. In John 1 and verse 12, it says, To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. And that's who we are, the children of God whose sins are forgiven. In Psalm 32, the psalmist says, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. 
Blessed is the man whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When we obeyed the gospel, our sins were forgiven. That starts us in our new life in Christ. After this, we now begin the process of growing and developing. We may stumble. If we stumble, however, we have forgiveness readily available to us. In 1 John 1 and verse 9, John says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, we begin our new life together in the Lord, and then after that, we grow and develop spiritually. Now, watch how John lays out that process of growth and development through three very distinctive stages. Look at verse 13 of 1 John 2. John says, I'm writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you children because you know the fathers. And then verse 14, I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Now let's look at these stages starting at the end of the verse and moving back towards the beginning. Stage one, he says, I write to you children. Now John changes words on us here. He no longer uses the word technion, it just means offspring. And now he does in fact use the technical Greek word to refer to a young child, like an infant. Here he says, I write to you young children, little infants, because you know the father. Well, what's one of the very first things that an infant knows? They know their parents. That's why a child will say, mama, pretty early on, usually their first words. Many years later, it seems like they will say, dada, but it's still a recognition that what children see first are their parents. So, we begin the process of our spiritual life as a spiritual infant. We know God as our Father. This is the Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But they don't know much more than that. Then there's stage two, spiritual young men. In verses 13 and 14, John says, I'm writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. And then in verse 14, he says again, I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Now we're dealing with someone who has progressed a bit in their spiritual life and development. Now they've gone beyond simply knowing that they're a child of God. They have some scripture in their belt. They've begun the process of retraining their thinking. Their thoughts are becoming more and more pure. They are no longer being drawn to the things and the methods of the world. Now instead, they are having the renewing of their mind. They're being renewed in the Word of God or allowing the Word of God to renew their mind and their thoughts. In Psalm 1 and verse 2, the psalmist says concerning the righteous man, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. In Acts 17 and verse 11, he says there that the Jewish people were more noble here in Thessal than those in Thessalonica. They received the Word with all eagerness, examining the Scriptures daily, to see if those things were so. I would encourage you in your walk with God to make sure you spend time in the Word, that you allow the Scriptures to saturate your thoughts. When a person finds themselves in need of making decisions or determining what to do, what course of action to take in their life, they draw on the resources readily available to them. If the Word of God is providing you with wisdom, and the Word of God is providing you with guidance and direction as to what is right and what is wrong. The chances of you making the right decision are greatly improved. Young men, spiritual young men, have a concern for their relationship with God and make sure that they spend time in the Word of God. In Psalm 119 and verse 11, the psalmist there says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Allow the Word of God to define your thoughts, but recognize that spiritual victory comes by actually putting the Bible into practice. It's not enough that we just know God's Word. It is important that we actually do God's Word. And then there's stage three. 
John says in verses 13 and 14, I am writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. He says the exact same thing in verse 14 for emphasis. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. Now we enter into the third stage of spiritual growth, the spiritual father. This is one who doesn't know just about God, but he knows God truly, deeply, and intimately. There are Christians who know about God, but there are fewer Christians who know God truly at its deep spiritual level. But this should be the goal and desire for all Christian people. Paul said in Philippians 3 and verse 10 that it was his desire that he would know him and the power of his resurrection. John reminds us that God wants us all to grow and mature in the Lord. There was a little boy once who fell out of bed, and his father came in and picked him up and put him back in the bed and said, Son, what happened? And the little boy responded, Well, I fell asleep too close to where I got in. Uh, sadly, I believe that describes too many Christians today. They've fallen asleep too close to where they got in and have made little spiritual progress since they were saved. Don't let that be you. Today, as you walk together with the Lord, make sure you spend some time in the Scripture. Make sure you spend some time in prayer. Make sure you think on the things of God and what God would have you to do as you interact with other people and other situations throughout the day. Well, I hope that information and time in the Word is helpful and useful for you today. I'll be back again tomorrow broadcasting from another isolated location.